Hi, I hope you're doing all right out there. I thought I'd just do a little kind of thing to camera today, just talking about the writing process and some of the, the recording processes going on in the 130R project that um, I've been working on with uh, Neil Luff, uh, bass and production wizardry, Ian Humphrey, vocals wizardry, and Mick Robson, drums wizardry, and video editing as well. Um, so uh, what I've been doing for the writing process is using a program called Guitar Pro. So when the um, pandemic started, uh, the first week I was at home, I had to uh, try and you know get Skype lessons up and running and Zoom and things like that. And so what I've been meaning to do to, for a long time is get to grips with the Guitar Pro program. Uh, so I got a, a kind of copy of it, what, 30 day trial, and I... Um, set to work and then after a few weeks of working with it um i kind of had the idea oh i could um maybe i could tab one of my riffs uh and just see what it sounds like see how it works so i did that for a song called face in the crowd which you'll probably be hearing a full version of soon and then i kind of added other parts and then i found where i could cut and paste drums from other programs and eventually just over several days work and several hours i actually created a f full playthrough of the track uh, worked on the arrangement uh, and was able to do another copy of a different arrangement and A, B them and stuff like that. Uh, and eventually I kind of had the arrangement for a song, I was able to write the lyrics to the melodies uh, and stuff like that. Uh, basically it's, you know, the, the Guitar Pro program plays what you tab back as MIDI files. I'll, um, if I just play like this riff here, this is from the song Another War. So I'm just scrolling down here. Um, I'll just uh, isolate the uh, solo of the guitar, one guitar, and it sounds like this. So that's just one guitar playing, and then I can basically cut and paste that and create another guitar part and put that on the other side of the stereo. And you can hear what's coming from this speaker now. So the guitar sounds pretty kind of plastic, but that's because it's MIDI, it's not real guitar. It's basically I'm tabbing in all the notes and the correct note values, uh, and then it's playing back the riff. So I could play the riff, you know, I'm actually not in drop D here, but um, that's basically how it works. But one of the good things about it is if you want to change a note or a chord, you don't have to play it, you can just tab it in and hear it back. When you record guitars, you know, you can't have to play and replay stuff. With this program, you'd have to do that. You just can change the notes and go, all right, you know, that sounds good. Um, so basically, you know, you can get the drum kit in. Here's, um, uh, here's the MIDI. I just copied some drums from some of the pro things. Quite a good sound. You know, you can get your uh, bass guitar in. Let me find that. Um, uh, hold on, sorry, dithering here. Electric bass, apologies, yeah, so I'll just isolate that. And again, I just program in the notes. This is like really distorted. You can hear that there, but obviously this is just through bad kind of video speaker. It's pretty artificial. But what happens is when you get everything together and then you start adding in different tracks, you kind of create what I describe as a plastic, plastic version of the track. Imagine if I, you know, it's the 1970s and I sent my song to Taiwan to be manufactured. Um, this is what it might sound like, but then what you do is you re-record the parts properly, uh, which I'll explain in a sec. So you can hear that, it's sounding all right, I'll just crank it up a bit. You know, so we've got bass, drums, guitar in there, there's a couple of guitar parts, stuff like that. And as the track goes through, I can add different bits in and just, just kind of create a picture of what the track's going to be like. Then when I've worked on vocals and vocal melodies, lyrics, I can kind of sing along with the, uh, the, the, the um, track playing back through the computer and then just send that over as an MP3 file. Very basic, but it gives someone the idea of what the song is, is supposed to sound like. Then what happens uh, is uh, this, you know, is sent to Mick. Um, he removes the drum part, the, 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 the kind of just the drum pattern beat I've put in. Obviously it's all clicked up and then Mick puts his proper drums on. That's, he edits that, gets his takes together how he wants them. 
then it goes over to Neil and Neil adds his bass, his studio. And obviously Neil's kind of controlling all the uh, recording process, you know. Back at his, as it were, everything's just kind of sent over uh, by Wii transfer and MP3 files and things like that. Then uh, I'll go over Neil's and I'll record rhythm guitars, do the lead guitars, all the other guitars. And then Ian will go in and do the vocals. Ian's actually done the vocals for this track. I actually wrote this track with, with Ian in mind that he would do the vocals. Um, so uh, at the moment we've got proper drums, some of the proper bass and proper vocals, but not proper guitars because I've not had a chance to get over there. We have recorded remotely me doing guitars uh, and this was using a process using Microsoft Teams. So basically Neil uses Microsoft Teams to take over my computer uh, we used to an old Line 6 plugin because uh, we don't we don't need a great plugin to do the guitars because they can all be replaced with a better guitar sound. So basically, a plugin to a simulation uh, of, of of guitar sound. It also records a drop. It's called a dry signal. So I played some guitar that way, and then Neil reamped it through uh, Line 6 um, Helix, which has got really good amp modulations on it. Probably using Mesa Boogie and Marshall, something like that. And the beauty of these things is you can change them. So if we've got a mix of a track, well, actually, we want a different guitar sound here. We just, well, Neil just basically brings some new amp modulations. Everything's played properly and it's got the right punch dynamics and so forth, but it's just, it's not played on like the final sound. Um, so the Microsoft Teams thing was, was really a f quite effective considering, but the, the problem was there. Um, it's just better to be in the studio face to face. So we kept a couple of things like that. I think I ended up redoing them. Uh, so, yeah, it takes a while, this, um, basically, because we've not been able to go around face-to-face because -face of um, pandemic rules, although that has changed. But obviously, we're all working and got other things we've got to do. Um, so that's basically, in a si simplified form, the way I describe this process is, is basically I've created, you know, how the track, written the track in the computer software, and then all those bits are replaced properly with proper parts of playing. Uh, as we go along the process so um, and it's worked for me um, I've actually been writing quite a lot of ways like this like I say um, obviously home recording with proper guitar sounds is always going to be the best way but you have to kind of play everything with this you can cut paste replace notes and so on